All right, guys, welcome back. Um, today we're gonna go kind of over um, some of the new changes to the nose cone that um, we kind of talked about last semester, um, and finally got away uh, around to actually putting it into a model form, and that's kind of what you see in front of you here. Um, so a few major um, changes, or I guess things that I need to mention, is that the general shape of the entire thing has changed from an LV hack series of one third to um, a nose cone called the LD hack series um, with uh, your coefficient only being zero instead of one third. Um, so this actually makes the nose cone a lot a lot more tapered, a lot more pointy because um, the other nose cone kind of was a little more rounded towards the end, I mean towards the, the tip. Um, but the thing is, is that due to a, further, well, a little bit of research, um, found out that the actually the difference between a lot of these nose cones is that um, it's the the von Karman variant or the LD hack series um, is actually the best for your higher Mach numbers. And since we're going to be traveling in uh, Mach ranges from two to three, I figured might as well go ahead and model that one because. Um, we're going to be spending most of our time in that Mach 2 to 3 range anyway. So, um, but what we're probably going to be end up doing is I'm going to show you how to how I kind of designed this nose cone, how I built it, um, and then what I'm going to ask you guys to do is go ahead and model pretty much this same thing, but for the other two variants that we were um, considering. So the 0 0.5 power uh, series and the other LV hack uh, series nose cone. Um, so then we can run simulations on all of it and then compare it all together. Or at least that's kind of what I would like to see, um, whether or not there's enough time to actually do something like that. That's a whole different story. Um, so we'll kind of see what we get. But so um, I guess some of the other major changes that kind of happen is that um, so now the nose cone is actually made of multiple parts, as you can kind of see here. Now this is very rough. This this literally took me two hours to kind of put together and make. So um, I'm kind of just showing you guys the general principles on how you go about doing something like this, um, and then we'll go ahead and make something a lot more in depth and um, proper over the course of the semester as we get closer to the CDR. But essentially, um, it's kind of broken down into four major major pieces. So you got the nose cone tip up here which is kind of, um, which is essentially just uh, a stainless steel like bullet, um, which we're just going to mount um, the, the shell of the, the shell of the nose cone to after, which we're probably gonna be making from a, some kind of carbon fiber epoxy matrix or, or something like that. But essentially this is the nose cone where um, this is what's actually punching through the atmosphere here and then these bolt holes are where we're gonna mount the um, carbon fiber shell to. And then this little area down here is probably we're gonna thread this or something along those kind of lines and then actually uh, put a load um, transferring rod down from the tip all the way down to the base of the nose cone. So then all of the force um, experienced from punching through the atmosphere here is gonna be transferred down to the rest of the body. Um, and not be transferred by the um, carbon fiber um, shell itself. Um, and then as you can see here, there are these shelves on the inside for avionics, um, so then they can mount all of their gear as they need it. And then down here, we got a coupler. Um, now this part's gonna have to change a lot like this. I just put something like this, um, but we're, we're just gonna need to find a way to adapt this um, section to and connected to the rest of the vehicle um, so for now it's this is all right but we'll, we'll go through and actually change this up another time um, and so let me actually show you so the kind of idea is to go ahead and actually mount this all together like this let avionics put all their equipment inside the shelves and then we'll actually go ahead and add the um, shell on afterwards and then uh, mount it into place. Now, one thing that um, is kind of important in the design of this, um, you can do it a few different ways. Uh, I did it kind of a, I don't wanna say a funky way, but um, I did it 
Oops, I'm in the wrong folder. Um, I did it using configurations, and if you didn't notice the other day, I made a configurations um, video um, talking about pretty much uh, how to, pretty much how to go about using them, um, and what are a few different ways you can actually use them. Um, so, sorry, I'm I'm looking for a file over here that I'm gonna need to show you guys. Okay, cool, found it. So. Um, Pretty much what I did to start off, so we're gonna go jump back in here into this part. So what is one main thing that I did is that I actually modeled the entire nose cone in one part. As you can see here, um, I went ahead and I created an equation driven spline um, and that was pretty much the first thing I did. And then I revolved it around um, a common axis essentially. And that was pretty much what I used to make my nose cone. Now, for this equation-driven spline, um, this is where pretty much it's going to drive the shape of your nose cone. And as you can see down here, um, well, to get to your equation-driven spline, you just right-click on your the little arrow or left-click on the little arrow and go to equation-driven spline here, and then you'll be able to um, start a new sketch with an equation. But essentially, um, once you have that, you're going to want to go to parametric equation type, and you're going to want to... Uh, input these values. Now, the thing is, these values are for your LV hack series nose cone. So this one is for the LD hack, which is the Von Karman variant. And there's another um, LV hack quarter or um, one third series that is very similar to this equation, except it has one extra term here. There's uh, in this square root here, there's another term that um, gets multiplied by zero for this top one, but in here it actually gets changed. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and add that right in here. But um, once I do that, I'm gonna add these into the comment section of the, um, or in the description of the, uh, the YouTube video itself. So then you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. But essentially just copy and paste this um, right ahead into your equation right here. Now your X of T is going to be your theta value and your Y of T is just gonna be your Y value. Um, and your parameters are going to be your um, Pretty much your starting point to your um, yeah starting point to your ending point like this. Um, and since we have a diameter of fourteen, um, I'm actually have to go check to see if this needs to be your radius or your diameter. Um, I'll double check that and get back to you. But I, I use the diameter, and I think that's what I did the first time. So I'm gonna have to double check that, and I'll let you know. Um, but pretty much, just go ahead type in the equation, type in your two parameters, and then hit check, and then you should get an equation-driven spline. And then if you go ahead and revolve, base that around, you can get a solid nose cone kind of like this. Now what I did from here is that then I used my configuration menu, and I actually cut away sections um, from what I needed. So from the nose cone tip, I essentially, as you can see, I went straight from the nose cone, the complete thing, and I just added a revolve cut just so that there was just this little part left, which was done by this feature. And that's kind of how I came up with the nose cone. And then I just pretty much kept doing that kind of stuff um, until I got a shell here, cut the shell out, uh, make sure there was nothing else in there, um, made the load column uh, with the shelves built on. Um, this is probably gonna be made a little different. I'm probably gonna have the shelves taken off and have the load rod on its own. Um, it was just easy to make them both at the same time, so I did that. Um, and then this is the section coupler at the bottom. And again, um, I'll probably be making these support rods as a separate part that gets added onto it. But the whole kind of reason why I did this all in configurations is that now pretty much this assembly is just made from one part. Um, there's only one part and there's four different configurations that go into this assembly. So it makes it really, really simple um, and makes it have very few parts, which, which is really, really nice. Um, 
Now, that may not be the best course of action for our final nose cone itself, but if you can go ahead and do some quick iterations and come up with things like this where we can start running some CFD analysis on and some structural analysis on and start assigning some materials, we might be able to come up with some pretty cool um, um, graphs and charts comparing these different nose cones to each other. Um, I'm trying to think of, is there anything else that really went into this nose cone? I mean, the biggest thing was just the configurations and cutting stuff out. Um, and I guess I might show you that real quick. So I know I talked about it in that other video, but I'm going to show you real quick in this one. So I talked about the shell being usually in two halves and then we're going to mount them together because it's probably going to be easier to make in two halves and it's going to make our lives way simpler to mount it together in halves. So we're going to go here, go to shell. We're going to add a configuration. We're going to say this is a half shell. Ah, damn it. All right, 0 0.5 shell. Um, OK, so from here, pretty much now, um, whatever we do now in this little configuration is going to be exclusive to this configuration unless you change um, one of these, unless you edit one of these um, features, then it might actually change other features um, in these other configurations. So to, to, to avoid that, if you right click and you go to edit feature, um, there's gonna be this configurations menu on the left hand side that says this, all or specify configurations. So make sure to keep an eye on this whenever you're editing um, features in a specific configuration. Um, but for now, pretty much what we're doing is we're going to be adding a sketch and we're going to be cutting away so we're not editing anything that's existing. So for instance, we're just going to go ahead and cut away this side. Oops. And then we're just going to cut this. Now I'm just showing you real kind of simply what we can do. So that's now half your nose, half your nose cone. And then now, as you can see, we have a full shell model and a half shell. So now if we go ahead into this assembly, I can actually change Save this, save all, close this guy out. Ah, damn it. All right. Um, yeah, I'm running too many things at the same time. <laughs> but uh, essentially, as you can kind of see, is like you can cut away that section. Um, and then now, what I'm going to go ahead back into is load up the assembly and change it right away. Um, so then um, it doesn't take much time to switch in between uh, parts and designs uh, using configurations, which is the real, real nice part about them. But I'm gonna have to probably go back and, and look into a few things for this nose cone. Um, I gotta double check the overall length and then I gotta double check um, the um, if I put the radius for your um, for the T value, or if I put the diameter for the T value, so I'll, I gotta double check that, um, and I'll probably make a quick update video, or, or probably not, because um, I mean the, the basic concepts are gonna be exactly the same thing. Um, I'll just mention it to you guys in a meeting. So as you can see, I can change right away into the other half shell configuration. So now as you can kind of see how we would be putting this thing on because we're pretty much going from not having this, this not being there, avionics putting all their equipment on, um, getting everything ready. And what we're probably going to have is the wires go through this um, because this tube is actually hollow. It's actually a hollow tube. So you should be able to actually um, drill holes into this and pass your wires through 
down here and into the next section and we'll probably have a little slot for all the, the wires to come out of. Um, but what we're gonna have to start thinking about is how do we go from here um, to our next section, which is gonna be our recovery section. So how are we gonna mount the um, parachutes? How are we gonna get those out of the vehicle? How are we gonna activate them? All that kind of stuff. So um, we'll need to start thinking about that and um, talk about it during some of the meetings, but this should be kind of a good enough way to kind of get you guys started into using the, um, well, into starting designing some of the nose guns so we can start running some tests. So if you got any questions, let me know. Otherwise, um, I'm gonna continue doing some basic analysis on this. Like I'm gonna show you guys how to run an FEA analysis on this and then a CFD analysis on this. Um, and then pretty much from there, I might, as, I might move on to the other sections of some of the vehicle. But for now, um, mess around with this and I'll see you on at a meeting. Peace.